Okay, okay, mic check, one, two, one, two. I am the Y2K Collector and I'm back. Uh, I've got a new video that I want to share with you. Uh, this is going to be uh, episode uh, 1.5 in my uh, PlayStation 1 uh, series. It's a series that I'm doing, it's my first series, so please don't sue me if I don't execute this perfectly. But um, this is basically just a series going over uh, all of my PlayStation 1 games, and I kind of broke them down into a few categories, uh, you know, and, and a lot of that is pretty much uh, driven by their, their value as well as their, uh, their popularity. So, uh, in this section, I'm talking about the alternatives. And in uh, episode one, I shared with you a few games that I have in my PlayStation 1 collection that aren't uh, fully complete in box. Either they have a reproduction case, or usually it's just some type of reproduction case or a different jewel case. Um, but it's not like the original manual, or some of them may not even have a manual. Uh, there is one case where I actually, where the game isn't even uh, authentic. And I think uh, that's my copy of Cannon Spike. I was able to get a copy of Cannon Spike, and uh, Cannon Spike was actually a uh i think it was a, a burnt uh version of the original game so and that's just because those games are just so expensive i mean cannon spike i don't think you can get it for under 350 um and so anyway just back to the playstation right so there were a few playstation games that i really wanted to get one of which uh just brought me right back to my early teenage years it was a game that my brother had and he let me borrow it and i played it and i beat it um and that was uh klonoa and so um when i started uh, collecting for the playstation one again i said you know i really want to get some of these games and, and klonoa was one of them but there were also some other games that i definitely wanted to check out one of which was the adventures of trombon as well as uh uh I believe it was a tell tell concerto i think that's how you say that game so there were a few games that i really wanted to uh experience and i just never really got the opportunity to try those out and uh when i got around to looking at them uh and the, and the cost to purchase them it was just astronomical so i mean i wasn't gonna pay 500 bucks and so on and so forth so i, I said to myself how can i get access to some of these games um in a much uh, cheaper version and this is where the PS Vita comes in. And so uh, this is part 1.5 of my PlayStation collection. And I would classify these PlayStation 1 games that I'm going to go over. I'm going to put them in the alternatives because uh, these aren't games that I'm able to play on their original form. And by original form, it means that I do not have the physical copies of these games. I don't have the discs with the manuals where I can go in and just put it into a uh, PlayStation console and play the game. Um, and, and so I found a hack for these games. And for me, this, this just increased my PS Vita value, um, you know, I, I think a hundredfold, right? Because just by having these games, you know, on there, it just makes my P PS Vita so much more valuable to me. But let me get into the games, right? Before I go on with my babbling, it's already been three minutes. So, uh, the first game that we're going to go over is the game that you're looking at now. Oh, actually, I think the Vita turned off, so let me turn it back on here. Uh, yep, so and the first game we're looking at is this game here. This is The Adventures of Tron Bond. Um, this is the most expensive game on the PlayStation right now, um, and I think it's going to hold that title for a while. Um, but this is a game that I really wanted to play just because I, I am a fan of the Mega Man Legends series. I really do like that series. I'm a big fan of it. And so it was just a game that I knew I wanted to uh, experience. Uh, I just didn't want to pay that price tag. And so the PS Vita offered me this opportunity. I was able to actually uh, get this game on the PlayStation uh, Network, on the PlayStation Store. I think I got it for about uh, either $7.99 or $9.99. Either way, $9.99 definitely beats, you know, $600, $500, $700, $800. I think I've even seen this game for 1000 bucks. So this, to me, was a great way to just maximize the, the potential and the functionality of my PS Vita. And so The Adventures of Trombon is definitely a game that I've got on there. So another game that I have on there is going to be 
the game that I mentioned earlier on in the video, and that's this game here, uh, Klonoa. Klonoa is a great side-scrolling uh, platform game. Uh, it's a very cutesy game. Uh, it's just one of those games that you don't really think you're going to get hooked on it or that you're going to really want to play it a ton, but you just find yourself just getting hooked into the gameplay, right? And so uh, Klonoa, Klonoa was one of the first games that I actually beat on the PlayStation because when I first got the PlayStation, I was primarily playing fighting games on the PlayStation and a lot of Marvel games and Mega Man X games on the PlayStation. I think I had, uh, you know, Mega Man X5, 6, I think 4, if I'm not mistaken. I was totally into that because the, the PlayStation was the first uh, system that I got after my Super Nintendo and I had started playing some of those Marvel games because there, there was I think it was Marvel uh, superheroes uh, War of the Gems uh, I think that was on the Super Nintendo so I was already on that path and then the PlayStation just had a bunch more games but anyway getting back to Klonoa Klonoa is one of those games that uh, is just so expensive on the PlayStation again I think this has to be top three uh, most expensive PlayStation 1 games but it's a great game, right? And so I think if you're a fan of the PlayStation and a fan of this era in time in video games, you're gonna wanna experience this. And so again, the Vita just comes in clutch, right? The Vita comes in clutch and it offers me the opportunity to experience this game um, in, a, in a great way. And even if I wanted to get more of that nostalgic vibe when playing it, uh, there is a way I believe that you can e either it's through the PlayStation three, I believe that you can actually play this on a actual TV screen. So you can kind of get that full, you know, that full feel, that full nostalgic feel, because you know, that's why I would play a game like this is really for the nostalgic rush. And it is a fun game. So Klonoa was definitely another, another one of those games that I got on the network. Uh, Another game that I definitely wanted to try, wanted to experience, and this is the last one I'll touch on. I've downloaded others, but this is uh, Herx Adventures, and I've seen this game. I remember when I was collecting for uh, the Sega Saturn, and I was going through uh, the games that I wanted for that system. I just remember this game being so expensive on the Saturn even a few years ago um, that I was just not ready to you know, pay that price for it. And so when I was kind of scrolling through uh, the PlayStation Network, I did run into Herx Adventures. And I, so I said, wow, you know, $5.99. Yeah, you know, let me go ahead and check this out. Let me see what, what all the fuss is about. Let me see if this game is worth what it's asking or what's being asked for it online and in most video game stores. And uh, I tried it out and I could see the... I could see why it's such a popular game um, and I, I could definitely see how if this is a game that you played when it first released, I could see how this would send amazing waves of nostalgia uh, to you. So, um, you know, this is another game that I wanted to check out again, Herx Adventures. And again, the, the PS Vita could, just comes through clutch um, and it just allows me to experience a lot of these PlayStation 1 games right here, right at my fingertips. And a lot of these games are a lot of fun. Um, they, you know, they have a lot of nostalgic uh, feel to them. And uh, this just, these are three games. I, I also have Tumba uh, Part 1 on there um, uh, on the PS Vita, just because Tumba 1 was, again, another very expensive PlayStation 1 game that I didn't want to pay the price tag for. But this was an alternative, right? And so the PS Vita just comes through clutch and allows me an alternative way of uh, experiencing these PlayStation games and adding them to my collection. Um, and to me, it just, again, just incredibly boosts up the value uh, of my PS Vita. And this is something anyone can do there's no secret behind me adding these games all you got to do is just get on the playstation network and you can go ahead and download these games today and have them on your ps vita so that you can enjoy them at your fingertips well i'm the y2k collector just coming at you with another installment of the playstation one collectives uh, episode 1.5 the alternatives i hope you enjoyed this video and again i hope you have a great weekend take it easy